on this morning. It's a good day to be alive. It's a good day to be alive. It's a good day to be amongst the living. Come on in. Put good morning on the screen. Hallelujah. Invite someone to come on in. You know, invite, share, and tag. I want you to invite, share, and tag five people. Invite, share, and tag. Five people this morning. Invite, share, and tag. I believe today's message is going to be so powerful, um, especially when God changes your message from the day before. Preachers, you know what I mean. When God changes your message from the day before and you've prepared a message and God says, no, this morning I want you to talk about that. But I'm grateful to God that I have an ear to hear and that I am not intimidated when God changes the message. I've learned uh, in whatever state that I am in to be content. So when God moves with the cloud, I move with the cloud. So come on, put your name on the screen. Say good morning. Uh, let me know who you are. I believe today, today is going to be a day that God is going to do a great and mighty work in your life on today. So I am grateful to God for the things that he has done and the things that he's going to do. Uh, it's no goodness of our own. But because of his grace and of his mercy, we are not consumed. And it's so good to know that God did not leave us, nor did he forsake us. He's been with us to the very end. He's always been there. And we may not feel like he's been there, but God has always been there with us. Good morning, uh, Bishop and First Lady. Good morning. Good morning, Pastor Moffitt. Good morning. Good morning. It's glad that you all have joined us this morning. I'm excited today. Uh, truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. I choose to rejoice and be glad in it. So if you could do something for me, I want you to tag, invite, and share five people. Let me say it again. Tag, invite, and share to five people. I believe today's message is going to be exceptional blessing to your life. Why? Because it blessed my life. Uh, and I, tell, I often say this all the time. When God changes your message, you know that God really has a word for the people of God. And so God changed my message this morning, early this morning. And so I had a whole other message. And God said, no, Eric, I'm going to flip the script. But as I said earlier, I am so glad uh, that I don't get dis disheveled when he changes the message. Um, when you spend time with God and God changes the message, all you know how to do is just get in that vein and flow with God. Um, and so I am grateful to God today for what he's doing in the midst of us. I am grateful for our leadership, uh, Bishop-elect Charlie Watson, First Lady Brenda Watson, and our pastor, Pastor Bettina Moffitt. I am glad uh, that God has given us such great leadership uh, that he's placed over Overcoming Deliverance Center. And I don't take that for granted. So many times we overlook leadership because we're so busy, but I'm grateful for our leadership and for them trusting me over the last couple of months to share the word of God. I don't take this assignment lightly. And I bless God for what he's doing in the lives of those who join us every single week. It has been a blessing to me. It truly has been a blessing to me. Um, by way of announcements, uh, this is the month of July. We're starting a brand new series. I'm excited about this, this series that we're starting, um, A Conversation with God. And I believe today God is going to show us through this month how to rebuild our relationship with God, how to rebuild a trusting relationship. You may be saying, but I have a relationship. No, but what I'm going to share with you today, you're going to see, God, there's some areas I need to rebuild again. And so this month, God is going to give us this month, the month of seven is the month of completion. God is going to complete some things this month. So when we move into the month eight, the eight is the, is the month of new beginnings. And so I believe in God that God's going to complete the work that he finished is that he started us. He's going to come. He's going to finish it in the month of July. Also, by way of announcements, uh, this month of July, we will not have community Bible study this month. But join us in the first uh, Tuesday in August as we come back live. We're going to give you off this month to rest. Uh, be with your families on Tuesdays during the weekdays. Uh, I believe sometimes we have to give people a break. I know you probably said, but we're at, we're at home. 
Uh, we, we should be resting, but sometimes we need to pull away. So I felt led of God to give us a break for the month of July from community Bible study. We'll pick it back up in the month of August. I'm praying that my um, my sidekick, Pastor Moffitt, will jump on board in the month of August. I'm putting her out there. So August, she's going to come on back in and join us in the month of August. I'm excited about that. I'm excited about what God is doing. All by way of announcements, today at four o'clock, I want you to join us at Millennia Plaza, downtown Greensboro. Um, we're going to be having a cry for our mothers. Uh, we're going to have praise and worship. Uh, we're going to be praying. Uh, we're going to be um, uh, just lifting up God's name as we, pray, as we pray for our community, as we pray for our children, as we pray for mothers. Uh, you may not have birthed a child, but you may be an aunt, a grandmother raising a child. I want you to come and be a part of today at 4 p.m. It's going to be a blessing. By way of announcements of that, please wear your mask. Uh, where your PPE equipment, uh, we're still going to practice social distancing uh, just because we're joining together and we're gathering together. We're still going to practice the things that have been placed, put in place because we want everyone to be safe uh, while doing that. So we look forward uh, to seeing you at 4 p.m. today. Uh, come and be a part of, uh, invite someone, invite your neighbor, invite somebody to know that this is just not a gathering, but we're coming because we felt a need. Pastor Moffat felt a need for the mothers that are raising sons, that are raising daughters, and we need to be able to lift them up in this season. So I'm excited about that today. I'm excited about what God is doing in our, in our lives. I'm excited about the great and mighty things. I am excited because the last two days I've got to rest. Can you believe it? I have got to rest the last two days and I am excited because I did absolutely nothing. And that was wonderful for me. And so I don't get often a chance to do that. But Friday and Saturday, I rested and I am so grateful. So that's why I seem so excited today because I've gotten rest. And so I'm just excited about what God is doing. And so I pray today as we begin to go into the word of God, that you will begin to ready your hearts and minds. Get you some peak, get you some paper, get you some pencil. There's some things I'm going to give you. I want you to write them down uh, because I want you to go back and look at them and begin to study each message in the month of July. We're going to be building upon that. Uh, we're going to start today, but as we go throughout the month, God's begin to show us. He's going to begin to infuse the word by starting with this first installment on how to build a trusting relationship, how to build a trusting relationship. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this opportunity that you've given me to come into the lives of your people. I pray, oh God, that you would give me uh, the words to say, God, that you would let my heart be receptive, God, to what you want to say to your people. God, I don't take this opportunity lightly, but I give you the glory and I give you the honor for what you're doing in the midst of us. Now, Father, I pray that you let the word begin to speak to us. Let the word find us. Let the word correct, correct us. Let the word do what it only it can do. And that is to show us who you really are. And so, God, today I stand in agreement with your word. And God, I take none of your glory, but I give it all to you. And so, God, I thank you and I praise you for what you're doing in this season. I thank you for what you're doing in the lives of your people, because, God, it is a great day to be alive in this season. I thank you, God, for your life. I thank you for your son that died on Calvary that we may have a right to the tree of life. I thank you for your power that's moving in the midst of your people right now. I thank you for your healing power. I thank you for what you're doing. God, that you be glorified and God, you be magnified in all that we do for us in Jesus name that we pray. Amen, amen, amen. So if you have your Bibles, if you would turn to uh, John the 16th chapter, John, the 16th chapter, I'm going to read one verse. Uh, there are a couple of verses I may, I may read today if we get, have an opportunity to get to that. Um, so I may not finish this message, but we're going to keep building upon it. Uh, and when God says stop, I'm going to stop right where he tells me to stop uh, in that opportunity of sharing the word of God. John, the 16th chapter, verse 24. And it says, until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. As we have reflected over the last four months, uh, we have been in a quarantine 
or a stay at home since the pandemic has hit. I've had time to reflect, um, reevaluate, and most of all, spend time with myself. Really, yeah, spend time with Erica. Many pastors today are bivocational. So our time is spent working our secular jobs as well as preparing to speak the truths and the wisdom to his people. I must say, and a transparency moment that it has been taxing and at times it has been exhausting. Many of us have worked harder during this pandemic, uh, turning our living rooms, our offices, or preaching at our churches for worship with empty seats. I must admit the first couple of weeks was a struggle. God brought me back, God brought back to my remembrance, Erica, to build a relationship with your listeners. And I asked God, how am I going to do that? I said, God, I can't see them. But God said, you may not can see them, but they can see you. And that stuck with me. So I have worked hard to build a trusting relationship by inviting you to be a part of this word encounter each week. As I began to prepare my series for the month of July, as I often do, I asked the Lord, what are you speaking to us in this time? And what do you want me to pour out to your people? And the Lord said to me, I want you to tell my people, I want them to fall back in love with me again. I said, yes, fall back in love with me again. And I said, wow, look at my shirt. Wow. I said, God, wow. Fall back in love. I said, God, do you, are you saying that we have fallen out of love with you? My first instinct was, God, I would hope that we have gotten closer with you since we've been at home, since we've been in quarantine. But to my amazement, as I began to study and read and prepare for this message, as I was reading, I read an article that says that more people have struggled to stay committed to God while being at home because of the lack of accountability. Did you hear what I said? More people have struggled to stay committed while staying at home because of the lack of accountability. While reading, I asked myself the question, but accountability is a personal matter. It doesn't involve uh, me going to church. I cannot be accountable to my children, my family, my, my, my friends. But God said, Erica, that you have to become accountable for the things that you do. And the reason many people are struggling is because they're at home and they have not set the atmosphere in their home to be accountable. They have allowed anything and anyone to come into their atmosphere and has caused them to get off track. And they have focused more on watching Netflix, Hulu, uh, Amazon Prime, as opposed to spending time with God and reading the word of God, we we have failed in our level of accountability. So we struggled in our relationship with God. And I said, God, what is it that has caused us to get off track? God said to tell my people that my love goes beyond the four walls. And I gave God a high five in the spirit because I realized that God, we have focused so much on a building for the last umpteen years that we've never really taught people how to cultivate a relationship with God outside of the four walls. We've taught people how to come to church and listen to the music. We've taught people how to say hallelujah. We've taught people how to give a high five. We've taught people how to turn to your neighbor. We've taught people how to, how to begin to embrace people. But we have not taught people that the relationship that you have with God, it starts at home. Many times, and I, I, we can relate this to when our children go to school. We want the schools to raise our children. But if the truth is told, if you're not raising them at home, the school can't raise your child. The only thing the school can do is give them what they need to grow in their education. But you help them build a relationship at home. So God said, Erica, I want them to begin to understand that while they've been at home, don't waste your time because you're looking to go back to a building. 
while you've been in time, I pray that you've learned how to build a relationship with God, an in-depth relationship, not something that is surface. But God said, I needed you to build a relationship that goes deep. But I have good news for you this morning. You still have time to build a relationship with God in your home. You still have time to invite God to come into your dwelling place. You still have time to ask God to come into your house. Build an altar that you can get before God and say, God, show me how to go back to my first love. Show me how it means that God to embrace you. I used to sing an auntie's gospel choir. And this was my may have been my junior year, I think, in college. We had went to a church in Raleigh and we began to sing a song. I never forget it. Um, it's just like it happened yesterday. And we began to sing a song. I've got to go back to my first love. And I, I've got to be honest. I really wasn't living my life really sold out to God at the time. I sang in the choir, but I really didn't have a deep relationship. I still was doing my thing. I still went to the club. I still did the things I wanted to do, but I knew I had an obligation. So I committed myself to singing Auntie's Gospel Choir. So as I began to sing, we were on that stage. And it was in that moment, at that time, that my life forever changed. As we begin to sing, I've got to go back to my first love. Something began to turn on the inside of me. And I felt myself go up. When I came to myself, I was sitting on the front row beside the first lady. I don't know how I got there, but something changed in me that day that I will never forget that God welcomed me back. And he said, come back to me. Today is the day I want to bring you back to me. He said, Erica, I'm the first love. I'm the first love that you will ever have. It relates to your spirit. My parents loved me as, the, as I came into the world. But God said, the love that I have surpasses the love that your parents will ever give you. Because mom and daddy can die. Guess what? They can leave you. They can abandon you. They can walk out on you. Your husband can leave you. Your children can forsake you. But God said, my love, my love for you would never go anywhere. And so as that song began to resonate, I got to go back to my first love. Something changed in me. And I realized that God, I no longer am the same. So my life changed that very moment because I recognized that I had fallen out of love with Jesus and God desired that I come back to him. I like what Ruth says in Ruth, the first chapter, verse 16. He said, God, do not urge. She says, God, do not urge me to leave you or to turn back from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. This is Ruth having a conversation with uh, Naomi. But I think this scripture really speaks to where we are. I don't want I don't want anything to urge me or to pull me away from following God. I want to go wherever he goes. I want to be wherever he is. I don't want to be out of the safety of the ark of God. Because when I fall out of the safety of God, I become open prey to the hand of the enemy. I want God, I want the people that God has for me and the things God has for me not to be snatched out of my hand because I fall and pray. I fall out of love. My love has turned to something else besides God. Let me say that again. My love. I don't want my love to turn to something else besides God. And I would submit that some of you have, have found love in all the wrong places. You found love in a lot of places. And the reason some of you are struggling to be committed is because your commitment does not lie in God. Your commitment relies in things. Things will perish. Things will go away. But God's love, his unfailing love, would never fail you. To fall in love with someone, you must be willing to give them your heart and trust that they won't mishandle you or hurt you. Falling in love is risky because it is a faith walk. The best example that we have in falling in love is giving our lives over to Christ, communicating with God 
as he grabs our attention and pulls at our heart. Love is a matter of heart. I coined this phrase some years ago, love is what love does. God gave me that phrase for a sermon I preached some years ago. Love is what love does. Love is a reciprocal exchange. When you give love, you get love back. Love is a matter of the heart. When you, when you are in love with God, your heart feels light. You feel inspired again. And you feel how lovable God is to you. This is what this is what God desires for us in this season. One of my all time favorite gospel groups is Commission. Commission penned the song Love Isn't Love. And the first part of the lyrics I'm going to read to you, I want you to hear this. It says, I can tell you how I feel and all the things that I could do to show you that love that I have is true. There are many words I could sing, some melodies that I could play to show you the love I have is true. But my thoughts would change, listen to this, and my words, they'll pass. And only what I do is going to last. And this will show you the love that I have for you is real. God's love for us is real. God's love for us is true. God's love for us is unfailing. God's love for us will never fade away. Grass will fade away. Flowers will fade away. The sun will go down, but God's love will never leave you, nor will it forsake you. The love that God shed for us, it was so powerful that he died for us. He shed his blood just for us. The love that God gave for us, it was more than anything that we could ever imagine. I love God because he first loved me. He didn't have to love me, but I'm so glad that he did. I'm so glad that God thought enough of you and I, that he died on the cross. And one day he rose again for us. And the same power that God got up with is the same power that he gives us today. You can preach and shout and talk real loud, but it still isn't love until you give it away. That's one of the lyrics in the song. Love is about giving something away. God gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. I asked the question to you this morning, what are you willing to give God? What are you willing to surrender over to God? What does your love relationship look like? How much of love are you willing to give God? How much of yourself are you willing to surrender and commit to God? I love God, but I came to really know God when I come to know God as a healer. When I come to know God as a savior, when I come to know God as a deliverer, I know I heard my grandmother them talk about love, God's love for them. But when I knew God to be God, a, a, a deliverer and a savior, that's when I could stand strong with my shoulders broad and say, God, I know you to be a God of love. Because God, you didn't have to love me in spite of my shortcomings. God, you could have gave up on me. But I'm so glad that God didn't give up on us like we've, like we've given up on some people. Think about that. Some of you and I have given up on people because they didn't meet our standard. What would it be if God would have gave up on you because God felt like you didn't meet the standard? But I'm so glad that God's standard is not man's standard. Man will throw you away. Man will cut you off. Man will let you go. And I'm not talking about man in a figurative thing. I'm talking about the world system. They have those tendency when you do not meet their expectations, they will throw you away. But I'm so glad that God never gave up on us. He didn't look at me and say, Erica, you're not worthy for this assignment. I may not have been had the ability when God called me 25 years ago, but I can stand today and say, God is preparing me for what I am about to come upon. God is preparing me for what I'm about to walk into. Every day I get up, God is preparing me. I'm never fully prepared, but he prepares me. We've got to learn how to make some adjustments in our life. Some of us are not flexible enough. It's either my way or no way, but you've got to learn how to adjust. This, if anything I've learned during this pandemic, 
I've had to adjust the way I do things. I've had to adjust some of the things I like to do. I can't do them right now because right now they're not safe. So I've had to learn to adjust my situation to fit my circumstances. What does that mean? I love going to the movies. I've not been able to go to a movie physically, but I can watch movie in my house. So I've had to learn how to adjust. It's not so much about me going in stores, but sometimes when I feel like the walls are closing in, I just go outside and get some fresh air. So now we have, we've had to accustom ourselves now to wear a face mask going in public places because that we've seen the numbers rise. So we've had to adjust to these things and restrictions that the government has put in place. And I know so many people are against it, but I want you to tell you the, the mask, the gloves or whatever, they are there to save your life. Why would you not want to embrace something that would save your life? The same thing for Jesus Christ. He didn't give us a mask to put on. He didn't give us a cape to put on, but his son died that we might be saved from a sin sick world. The world that we're living in, if you look at the news and you look at what's going on in our government, there are some issues going on in our country. There's some things that God, if God don't come in and intervene, we're in trouble. The world's in trouble. But those of us that are believers, if we begin to be committed to this relationship, this love relationship that God has so given us, when the world around us is crumbling, we can stand with all assurance saying, God, you gave me this life and this life that you've given me, I don't take it for granted. But God, I thank you because God, you didn't give up on me when I felt like walking out. I don't know about you, but I've walked out on God many times. Yes, I have. I've walked out on God because I felt like God, if this is it, I don't want to be a part of this. I don't want to be a part of something that the more I try, the harder it gets. Or the more I give, I get nothing back. It's nothing more disheartening than to be in a relationship and you're the giver and you get nothing back. And so sometimes I have even told myself that it's, I'd rather be by myself if I can't get the same love back. But God reminded me of something. He said, Erica, the reason that many of us don't give freely is because we operate from a place of reservation and we don't know how to adjust to our current circumstances. Now I'm going to get into some relationship uh, uh, building here in a little bit. And some of you may get a little uncomfortable, but God said today, he said, I want you to have a healthy relationship, both spiritual and naturally. It's important that we have natural relationships you hear me? It's important we have natural. We need people. God did not design us not to be around people. He designed us that we would have fellowship one with another. So we have to learn how to build healthy relationships. We don't have to live in fear. Now, let me uh, put this to a sidebar here. Now, God does not mean for you to be in relationships that mishandle you. God don't want you to be in relationships that hurt you. God don't want you to be in relationships where you feel like I am being pressed. I'm being squeezed. But God wants you to be in healthy relationships. What kind of relationships am I talking about? Mother, daughter, father, son, brother and sister, husband and wife. Relationships come in all different forms. So you have to understand this should be a season of time that while we're in the state of this pandemic, you need to be reevaluating your relationship. Make some necessary adjustments now because eventually we will go back to our places of worship. Eventually we will get back to a place that we will assemble ourselves together. It may not be in the normal form or sense as we know it. Uh, and I wouldn't even begin to tell you I know what it's going to look like. But for our new norm now, God said today, it's time to make some adjustments. It's time to reevaluate where you currently are. It's time to reevaluate what is it, God, that I need to be doing now. I know the last two or three months you've been lazy. I know, I know, I know. It's, 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 been, it's, been, uh, uh, it's been really um, 
easy just to sit on the couch and push the remote. I understand that. I know, I know. It's been easy just to eat and lay down. I know, I know, me too, myself. But I realized that God is more than me just sitting on the couch. It's more than me just pushing a remote. I've got to adjust myself. Because I've got to prepare myself because we're coming to a place in our life that when God begins to lift this, what are you going to do? It's going to show. It's going to show have you really been spending time with God? Or have you been so engrossed in yourself that you've not given yourself time to heal, to be restored, to be rebuilt in this season while we're staying at home? Staying at home has been a good thing for me uh, because um, I am a person that I stay on the go. So staying at home has been good uh, because I've had time to spend time at home. Being at home for me has not been a problem. I know for many people, like, I can't stay. I love being at home because it's helped me to refocus. There are some things I learned about me that I didn't know before. And I laugh at them because I'm like, wow, I didn't know. I, I didn't really know I even enjoyed that. Um, so I've learned some things about myself. So t- the, 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 the 10 most common reasons relationships fail. Number one, arguments or misunderstandings. Number two, lack of communication. Number three, growing apart. Number four, infidelity. Number five, traumas. Number six, lack of feeling unappreciated. Number seven, sex. Number eight, money. Number nine, boredom. And number 10, children. You're saying, wow, Dr. Erica, that was a lot. It really was. It was a lot. But these are the most 10 common reasons relationships fail. But I want to look at one and two today. Arguments or misunderstanding. And number two, the lack of communication. What I have found is that we don't know how to talk. We don't communicate anymore. Before the pandemic, if you would go in restaurants, most people at tables would be on their phone and everybody's head was down. Nobody talked. Nobody said anything. And I would just look around in restaurants and I would wonder, wow, nobody's saying anything. Everybody's on their phones. And I'm saying, God, what, what is that? What should we be learning in that? And God said, Erica, the reason your relationship has failed with in the natural and your relationship has failed in the spirit is because you lack communication. And for the believer, our communication is prayer. Your prayer life may have been diminished, but my prayer is that during this period of time that God has given you a new zeal in your prayer life, that God has given you a new fire in your prayer life, that when you go to God in prayer, You're not praying superficial prayers, but you're praying prayers that God, that it not only moves the heart and the mind of God, but it begins to stir the gifts of God that's on the inside of you. Prayer is communicating. If you didn't know, prayer is communicating. It is our way to communicate with God. It is our vehicle. It's our tool to express who God is to us and allow God to speak to us. Let me pause right there. So many times, we're, we're praying and not listening. And God wanted me to say to you this morning, I want you to go in prayer this week, just listening. Let me say it again. God said this week, Erica, tell my people, when you go in prayer this week, I need for you to listen. God has something to say this week. He said, sit before me with the word of God in your hand. And as you begin to pray the word of God, I want you to pause to listen to the voice of God. God is speaking. He's been speaking the whole time, but you've not been listening to what he's saying. Some of you have been failing because you have failed to listen. Let me say that again. Some of you have been failing because you have failed to listen. Listening is an art. I'll be the first time, first person to admit. I know my friends and family on here will say, Erica got it right. I hit a deal on here. Sometimes I have fake listening. Yeah, fake listening. And I'm going to show you how what fake listening looks like. People's talking to you and you're saying, mm-hmm, yeah, okay, mm-hmm. 
And when you leave that conversation, I ain't heard nothing they said. Because in my mind, I done tuned them out. We do the same thing with God. We go to God and we begin to pray. And because everything around us, we think is so important. We miss God. We miss God. And God is saying in this season, stop missing me, coming to me with fake listening. God said, open up your ears. Let your heart be open. He said, I want to speak this week. He said, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit wants to say. God wants to speak. I have a secret. He's been speaking. The question is, are you listening? Are you listening? I find it hard to believe. I find it hard to believe that you're saying that God is not speaking. I find that hard to believe. I read an article and one person in the article said that they, that they feel that God is not speaking. And the next person said in the next paragraph, are you listening? I'm asking you this. Are you listening? God is speaking. I'm grateful that we have a church that embraces prayer. I'm grateful that we have leaders that embrace this prayer because what we have learned in overcoming deliverance here, if we don't know anything else, we know how to pray. Let me say it again. If we don't know anything, we know how to pray. We know how to bombard heaven. And if any one of our members of those connected them have a problem, all they got to do is call and we will begin to go into prayer. I was guilty many years. I've been guilty of this many years. I don't do it anymore that you would encounter people and they would say, pray for me. And I said, oh yeah, I'll pray for you. I would walk away and not praying. And God convicted me. He said, Erica, you may be the only prayer at that moment that could save their lives. So now when I see people that say, pray for me, I pray right there. I don't care if I'm in Walmart, food line, parking lot, because I never know what that prayer may do for them right then. God said today, if you would spend time with me, I'm going to speak and I'm going to show you great and wondrous things that you do not know. This is a season. This is a time that God wants to restore relationships. He wants to build trust again. God wants you to trust him. Some of you have been hurt. Some of you have been damaged. Some of you have been wounded. Some of you have been in a place that you've been, you feel stuck. And God's saying today, if you would give me your heart, Rend me your heart and not your garment. God don't want your clothes. God wants your heart. He wants your ears. He wants your eyes. God wants you to be committed back to your first love. For God so loved the world. I told you that earlier that he gave. My question to you again, I said again, what are you willing to give God? Are you willing to give God your heart this morning? Are you willing to give God your whole body? God desires to spend time with you. Stop giving God half of you. God won't hold. God wants the whole person. He wants what you are not willing to give. Let me say it again. God wants the innermost parts of you that you're not willing to give, not only to God or to no one else. You cannot build a healthy relationship if you're not willing to give something. It's a matter of the heart. It's a heart thing. It's a heart thing. Some of us need open heart surgery. We need God to go into those arteries and begin to clean out all of that hurt and disappointment. There are some people I know, I know, know they've hurt you. I know, I know they've mishandled you. They've, they, they've done you wrong. I know they've called you out of your name. They've done some things they shouldn't have done. Can I ask you the question? What have you done? Have you hurt somebody? Have you mishandled somebody? If God can forgive you, forgive them. It is about forgiveness relationships. If you cannot forgive, you cannot build trust. Let me say that again. If you cannot forgive, you cannot build trust. Trust is the most important relationship thing in a relationship that you would ever have. Uh, psychologist Eric Erickson, his one of his first theories in, uh, in, uh, in, in psychology, he said, trust versus mistrust. If a child doesn't learn trust at a very early age, as they begin to mature to adulthood, they begin to lack trust. So everything that they do lacks trust. Every relationship they get in fails because they can't trust. Every job they get upon, they, they, can, they don't stay long because they lack trust. You've got to trust somebody. You've got to trust somebody. We cannot walk on this earth 
and not trust somebody. It is about relationship. We are interconnected together. I need you and you need me. The Bible says every joint supply of, we need to supply the strength that each person needs. No longer can you walk alone. God said, I'm calling you to a season to walk together. It's time for us to come together as the body of Christ and stop doing our own separate agendas. Yes, I'm going to say it. God said, I'm calling for the body of Christ to come together. It's the same God and it's the same gospel. Let me say it again. It's the same God and it's the same gospel. God's not preaching anything new. The same word he gave over 2,000 years ago is the same word that we're preaching. God is just giving us revelation. God is just revealing who he is through his word. And you begin to know God through his word when you begin to spend time in his word. You've got to trust something. If you can't trust anything else, trust the word of God. Because of lack of misunderstanding, we misunderstand people at times. I'm guilty of that. We misunderstand what people are saying. Uh, we begin to read into what they're saying. We add stuff that they didn't say. Come on now. I know I ain't the only one. Uh, uh, we begin to formulate a response before they even finish their sentence. And because of our misunderstanding, uh, relationships have fallen apart. And because we thought we knew what they were going to say or do, what we did, we began to pull away from because we didn't want to get hurt. We didn't want them to mishandle us. But what you didn't realize when you pulled away and when you drift drew to yourself, you were not only hurting them, you were hurting yourself. It is time for you to open up your heart. It's time to love again. My God, it is time for you to love again. Love is what love does. When you give love, you get love back. God said today, tell my people, Erica, I want them to love again. It is about a true love. I know there's some husband and wives that are listening today. I know there's some children listening today. I know there's some individuals in relationships that you're contemplating getting married and, and doing some other things. But I want you to know you've got to build trust. Trust is a foundation that you cannot leave out. If there's no trust, there's no relationship. You've got to trust each other because when I'm in a relationship, I'm giving you my heart and you give me your heart. And if I can't trust you with my emotions, if I can't trust you with my heart, then I don't have a relationship. So what God is saying today, I need for you to rebuild again. Ah, my God. He said, it's time for you to rebuild again. God said, I'm wiping the slate clean. He said, now today you can rebuild again because God said, I gave you love not to hurt you, not to harm you, but to build you up. Did you hear what I said? God said, I gave love to you to build you up. The love that God gave us was never designed to hurt us. Now, people have mistreated you using love, but God said, I'm not going to hurt you. But God said, Erica, tell the people today. If you want a healthy relationship, it's a love thing. It's a trust thing. And it's about being committed. C commitment is something that I think that we that we shy away from. We can, we can be committed to our jobs. We can be committed to our cars that it'll take us from point A to point B. We committed to our houses. We committed to a lot of things, but we find it hard to commit to each other. Why is that? is because we built our relationships on superficial ideas. Television has given you a false sense of what a relationship really is. Let me say that again. Television paints a picture for you of what a relationship should look like. But my relationship is designed the way God designed it. I cannot emulate someone else's relationship by what I see on TV. Because that man or that woman that you desire to be in a relationship with, they have two different unique personalities. And so when we come together, we got to learn how to communicate. We got to learn how to spend some time together. And how do you do that? You got to learn how to trust. Secondly, the lack of communication. We can, I don't, I'm not a telephone talker. I don't like talk, talking on telephone that much. Um, I've talked so much on telephone the last four months, having Zoom conference calls and conference calls that I'm, I feel like I'm just talked out. But what I have learned, 
uh, that is that when we have conversation, that person begins to tell you things that you may not know. So you've got to listen. Sometimes people are saying things they're really not saying. How do you build that communication? How do you build that? You've got to avail yourself to what is it and ask yourself the question, do you really want this? Don't waste their time if you're not willing to be committed. God is saying the same thing this morning. I want you to be a part of my kingdom. I want you to be a daughter. I want you to be my son. I want you to be my child. But God is saying to you, I'm not going to push myself on you. I'm not going to force myself on you. I'm not going to make you love me. You're going to love me because that's what you want to do. You're going to be committed to me because you desire to have commitment. God is a gentleman. He never forces himself on any of us. But what God does, he gives us choices. He said life and death lies in the power of the tongue. I asked you the question this morning. Are you committed to God or do you lack commitment? Are you willing to surrender your heart to God this morning? Are you willing to love again? Mm. Are you willing to build again? Because it's about building a trusting relationship. And I know that you and I have struggled in this area. But I was excited when God began to deal with me on having a conversation with God. So this month, we're going to talk about how to talk to God, how to talk to God, because it's more important learning how to talk to God first, because when you can talk to God, you can talk to people. My God, when you can talk to God, you can talk to those that are around you, because God will teach you how to speak to them. He'll show you what to say. He'll lead and guide you into all truth. That's what love will do for you. Love is not hard, it's gentle, it's kind. It's one thing that we can't buy, but it's the one thing God gave to us freely. So as we begin to move throughout the month of July, I want you to know one thing today. If you didn't hear anything else I said today, love isn't love until you give it away. And the greatest example we have is God giving his son for us that we may have access to God. And that access that we've been granted is going to prayer. Prayer is communicating with God. So this week, as you go in prayer, listen to God and he'll listen to you. Talk to God and he'll talk to you. That's what God wants in this hour, in this season. God wants you to come and talk to you. Jody C. Song was saying a song, come and talk to me. I really want to get to know you. Can you talk to me? That's what God is saying. I really want to get to know you, but can you talk to me? It's about talking to God in this season. I'm excited about what God is doing. You may say, well, I don't know God like you know God, but I want to come to know this God that you're preaching about. You've been teaching about this morning. It's about a love thing. It's about a relationship. It's about giving God everything that you have. And so God, I surrender my all to you. Everything I have withholding nothing. Don't hold back from God because God will not hold anything back from you. Everything God has for you is at your disposal. Let me say it again. Everything that God has for us in the kingdom is at our disposal. All you have to do is just ask God. Ask God to show you what it is I need to learn from you. But the first step, it must be salvation. Your first step of loving God is to give your life to Christ. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want you to come to know this God that I am so excited about giving to you this morning. I'm excited about this God that I made a step at an early age to come to know God. Yes, I walked away from him, but I remember when I first got saved, I was in the fourth grade. I was excited about my salvation. I was excited about getting baptized. I was excited about knowing God because God that they talked about, we learned in Sunday school, the pastor preached about, I was excited about knowing this God, not knowing that one day that I will be a carrier of the gospel. All because there was excitement that I was taught in the fourth grade. So I'm saying to you, you may be young and you may be old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. 
I want you to come to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. It's very simple. The Bible tells us if you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you saved. Salvation is simple. The part we made complicated is walking beyond salvation. Salvation is a faith walk. Today, you made the first step asking God to come into your heart. You made the first step, and I'm excited about your first step. If you made that step today, I want you to put your name on the screen. I want to share some information with you about this God that you came to know today on this July the 5th. I want you to come to know this God. I'm excited about your faith walk. I'm excited about the salvation. And I we want to help you to walk it out. We want to help you to learn to cultivate and develop a relationship. We want to disciple you as only God can do it through the word of God. I'm excited. I know that God has something great in store for us this week. I want you this week to spend time with God through the word of God. But most of all, I want you to listen to God and he'll listen to you. I want you to talk with God and he'll talk to you. This is a time of intimacy. That's part of the relationship where there's an intimate moment that you spend with God when nothing else matters and nothing else goes on. There's an intimacy in a natural relationship that we spend time with each other. But there is an intimacy that God desires with us this week. I promise you. If you give God some intimate time this week, God will show you some great and mighty things. I promise you, if you spend some intimate time with God, those things you've been struggling with, those things you've been wrestling with, God will begin to give you some greater understanding. God will begin to give you revelation of what those things that, you are been, that you've been struggling with. God is going to blow your mind. My shirt says, wow. This week, I want God to wow you. I want God to over excite you. I want God to blow your mind this week because you endeavor to spend some time with God. This is the season. This is the time that God is looking for a few good men and women. They're not afraid to say, God, I'm willing to walk this out. Not knowing which where I'm going, but God, I'm going to do it according to your faith and according to your word and according to your will. I thank you for spending time with me this morning. I pray today that something was, was said and done in your hearing that sparked a new zeal to come to know God, a new zeal that God, I want you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, God, that I love you more than anything. That's the God that I serve. I'm excited about God. How about you? And this is the season, this is the time that God loves us because he first loved you. I pray today, if this is your first time visiting with us, I pray today that you would put your information on the screen. We want to get some information to you. Today is our day of giving. Please give unto us today. I pray today uh, that we would begin to share in the word of God, that we will begin to be uh, 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 laborers in the vineyard, that we will begin to uh, make ourselves known to God in a special way, that God begin to reveal to us who he really is. It is about trusting God in this season. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the season and this time that you've given us to share the word of God. I pray more than anything, God, that you will let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart God, be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I pray, O oh God, that you let none of your glory, God, be lost in the midst of us, God. I pray, O oh God, that you would leave us speechless. I pray, O oh God, that you would show us who you really are in the season. God, I don't want to be without you. I don't want to walk without you. I don't want to live without you. I don't want to move without you. I don't want to breathe without you. I want you to so it overtake me. That wherever I go, as Ruth said, wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. I want my life to be hid in Christ. This is the season and this is the time for us to be glorified in all that we do. And for that, God, we give you glory and we give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. And remember that because God is the greatest power, you shall never be defeated. Until next Sunday, we see you next week. 
Spend time in the word of God. Spend time with your family this week and spend time listening to God and spend time talking to God. But most times spend time relaxing in his word and watch God work. Grace and peace. Can't find the words to describe